Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Strompcast 203. We've got the regulars, but of course, today we've got a very special guest. He is a former sporting player and also has won over 10 trophies in Portugal. And it's also a current Portuguese international. It's Javante Williams. How are you doing today? Hey, how's it going? Now we're happy to like to have you happy on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Record on Halloween. True. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're delighted to have you on. Thank you for the time. I know you're, you're a busy man, so we, we appreciate the, the time coming on. So, yeah, uh, I guess without further ado, but just how are you in general? How is, how, how's life right now? Life is great, man. I cannot complain, honestly. Um, working every day, more focused than I've ever been, and uh, just happy where I'm at right now and just happy about my environment, the way I'm living my life and the way I'm uh, you know, trying to tackle down my next goals. Yeah, awesome. sweet. I believe Danny's got the first question for you. Yeah, I mean, talking about where where you're at, let's let's take it back a bit to where it all started to, yeah. to Alaska. Uh, was really wanting to pick your brain on like how the whole basketball scene out is out in Alaska. I mean, I had to I, I Google. I also listened to a, a few interviews you did. I had to Google. I was shocked when I heard Carlos Boozer and, and Mario Chalmers, for example, came out of uh, yeah. came out of Alaska. You got two rings, at least in, in Mario out there. Um, was just wondering, you know, such a such a unique place. Like, what's the basketball scene out there? How was your like like upbringing, and 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 did you ever see this as like a like a career being obtain, uh, attainable out in Alaska? Perfect, perfect. So let's start it off. Um, when I was growing up in basketball in Alaska, it was more so like nobody really thought about going professional. We didn't know about nobody talked about overseas basketball at all. Um, what we knew, Trajan Langdon is also from Alaska. He's currently like the general manager for the Pelicans right now. But um, he so those were our stars, Trajan, Boozer, and and Mario. But um, growing up, you didn't. So it's like it was kind of like if you didn't go to the we're 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 a state that's not necessarily considered the United States. We're not California. Mm. So most guys when they're growing up, you know, we're thinking if you don't go Division One or you're not going to the NBA, there's really no. What are you doing? You're only playing basketball to like uh, to just do it with your friends or just playing at the gyms and the rec centers. But um, so for me and everybody like kind of around my circle, we play basketball just as like something to do. There's not too everybody asks like, what is there to do in Alaska? Well, it's not too much to do. But me and my friends, this is like right before the internet just hit the storm and everything like that. So we're really just playing basketball every day. Like I grew up playing basketball. After like going to the Boys and Girls Club in Mountain View, uh, Anchorage, Alaska, we we play basketball like every day for hours and hours and hours, and like that was my life. We used to just play basketball, go to school, and then like hang out with the friends. Like that was the only way to hang out with friends. So mm. basketball is one of those things, and Alaska doesn't have the biggest pot of everybody getting there. But since I left and uh, leaving college and all that type of stuff, like it's picked up crazy. And uh, we got we got like two more NBA players right now, and we got uh, the the Pac-12 or Pac-10 women's basketball. She's like the former, she's the MVP, reigning MVP, Alyssa Peely. She's playing for Utah right now, so we're on the rise. And there's a lot of kids like uh, like pursuing this career. That's awesome. Uh, how do you get from Alaska to Portugal of all places? Because that couldn't be more polar opposite. Can you take us through like that process of how you came over to Portugal and like just kind of first impressions when you arrived in the country. Yeah. So, um, got to go to college. So, uh, my, my whole, my mindset, you like, understand my mindset during this time. I'm like, I don't want to be in Alaska so much. So I'm like, how am I going to get out of here? I have a friend that's like really good at football. So he's like, well, he's going to college and my family's pushing me to go to college. I'm just like, I didn't have the craziest high school career. I only played one year of high school basketball at the higher level. And it wasn't, the highest level in the state. So there's 3A, 4A, and 2A, and I was playing in 3A. And um, so I wasn't even, like, my senior year in high school, I, I was able to, like, get better in basketball and came out of school. I didn't have any offers. I didn't have anywhere to go. So I really researched uh, based on my friend that was playing football, and he had a, a – he had a – not necessarily a scholarship, but he had an offer to go play in California. So I kind of just followed his footsteps and was just like – well, let's see if I can get to California. And I went on AAU trips and, and played during the summer basketball, trying to get a scholarship and nothing really happened. So 
one team randomly just hit me up or hit me back because I sent them some video and they were like, uh, yeah, come out to come out to California. Let's see what's up. So went to California, played there for a couple of years and uh, earned a scholarship to go play uh, Division two basketball in Colorado. After Colorado, I went back home to Alaska, um, played there for a year. And then after my senior year, I was able to get in contact with some agents, some agents, two agents contacted me and I just had to choose. It was like I remember at that time thinking, like, which one should I choose? Which one's going to be the best for me? And um, I chose the I chose I guess I chose the right one at this point. <laughs> but um, I went with an agency and it's uh, it's crazy because there was a basketball player named Brad Olson. He used to mm -hmm. play for uh, Barcelona as well. He played there, had a long career there, and um, he started in the low leagues in Spain and he worked his way up to get there. But I um, was at his former college and then signed to the agency that signed him out of college. And I was just like, OK, well, now I know that there's guys that are really, you know, doing something overseas. So now this has become like a possible future for me. And um, after that, yeah, I signed with that agency. Nothing really happened for the first year. They, they weren't able to get me a job. Um, I found a job through a friend. I uh, went to Georgia for a couple months. And from there, I think my agency kind of took me a little bit more serious. And um, I started taking the game a lot more serious and uh, went back to California, worked a job for a little bit. And my agency said, yo, we got a job for you in Portugal. And I was like, oh, Portugal, what's up with that? I didn't even they told me Olivieta. And I was like, I, I don't really care, dude. I just looked it up. I seen waterfalls. I see sunshine. I said, OK, yeah, put me on the flight. Let's go. And I remember um, I tell the story all the time. It's uh, on my trip to Portugal. I ended up meeting a group of kids that were from Oliveira in the airport in, New in Newark, New Jersey. And uh, I got the videos and everything. It's like there's they see me in the airport and they're like, oh, you're going to port. We're all on the same flight. And they were like, oh, this is the guy. This is the guy. And um, yeah, I just remember flying to Portugal, uh, arriving in Porto and um, there was love already. So I seen the, this, the kids and I was like, OK, this is dope. This is going to be something. It was in September. So it was like the sun was shining. Everything was great. And when I first, they drove me to Oliveira and um, they were playing Benfica that day on a preseason game. And it was just like, I seen the atmosphere. I was like, oh, wow, this is, I'm a professional now. This is dope. This is like cool. And uh, yeah, that was my, my first impressions was like, oh, this is amazing. I love this place. The weather, everything right there. I was like, oh yeah, they had me right there. I was, I was stuck. Yeah, you arrived at a good like peak time, like beautiful <laughs> weather. Could not be more opposite than Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. And, but I was living in California for like that between that whole period of time. So in the, the, the weather between Portugal and California is kind of similar. So yeah. I already knew what I wanted. I knew I didn't want to be part of no snow. I knew I didn't <laughs> want any of that. So I, yeah. California as, right, a, as a couple Portugal Canadians, myself and Danny, we can attest to that. We we feel you on that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so bro. We know. And freezing we, right we now. Cousins, man. We, we know. <laughs> yeah, 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 we yeah know. exactly. <laughs> exactly. You talked about obviously your your first impression of Portugal, but of course, uh, being the sporting podcast, your first impression of sporting, what was, was that like? And you know, you mentioned the atmosphere, and I would like to think that the sporting fans took you in as sort of one of their own, and you also like relayed that fact as well. What were your overall first impressions and your thoughts still on on sporting and joining them? Well, coming from Oliveira, having that two, we had a two year run, and it was real good. Um, when I just found out about sporting coming back to basketball it just seemed everything just seemed so perfect you know what i mean like mm. win two championships i'm emerging as this good player and then this new team's coming in nobody's been there um it's untouched you know what i mean so i felt like i was like discovering gold and then when i got there they they took me in i, I come in and I, I see the arena and i'm like oh man they put my face on the thing and just the love that i received from i didn't know sporting was so big i didn't know there were so many fans everywhere so like just to see that from the beginning it was uh, it was already on i already knew this is going to be something special I, I felt it it was just like amazing yeah even even on just even prior to, to just to touch a bit more on Oliveira uh, on olivetas i mean you guys sort of made them like the powerhouse in portugal uh in terms of like the basketball scene before i mean before there was a spark thing and i feel like even before like uh, Befica, especially Befica and Porto started like investing a lot more money into, um, into yeah. basketball in Portugal. There was this little town, not too far from where I'm from, by the way, but there was this little yeah. town in, in, yeah. in, uh, in Portugal that are like killing it. So like, and then to win back-to-back -back titles, I think you both beat, you beat 
Benfica in the in the in the finals with them as well, or, or I believe it was both against Benfica. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Benfica in the finals one year, the second year, and Porto in the first year. Porto, oh, my bad. So yeah, so I mean, what was that group all like? How special was that group? Like, did you guys have championship aspirations? Was it just something that sort of like you guys all just realized at the moment? Um, like even prior to Spartan, well, coming in, coming in for me, I, I'm telling you, I had very low expectations of anything. I didn't know. I still was just learning about everything. So I just knew that, like what I could do and what, how could I contribute to the team? And then when I got there, it was just like the perfect group of guys. There was enough older guys that like understood the game, knew about winning and knew what they were like. They knew like championships were possible. For me, I was really going in like, okay, well, let's try to get some more minutes. Let's try to get on the court. Let's see what's happening. But like when I look back at it now, like the coach was coming, everybody was coming back for a reason. And everybody had something like there was a common goal that we all kind of agreed upon. And like I knew I wanted to get to a higher level and get to a, a different different position in my career. And other guys were in the same, they, they were feeling the same way. So it was like the perfect group of guys, honestly. And it just it it, the, the winning culture kind of spilled off into the next year because most of the guys came back and um, we just had that. It was it, the coach was perfect. We had the right group. The city was perfect because it just like we were able to still feel like the underdogs, even though we were the top dogs at some point. You know what I mean? And it was like just perfect timing because, like you said, Benfica and Porto weren't really investing too much into what they were doing in basketball. And if they were, it wasn't like, the best quality. So yeah. it was like. We had we had the perfect group of everything going on, and um, we hung out a lot. Small city. Our point guard used to pick us up from pra for practice every day. Uh, shout out to Zay Barbosa. But um, yeah, it was it was just a it was a, it was a it was a great time, man. Honestly. And then and then just quickly, and then like when you hear that Spartans coming back, um, I mean after like a twenty plus year hiatus. Um, are are there any doubts because you are already in like a championship team? Are there even like maybe potential talks of, of the other rivals, maybe trying to get your services as well. Like, um, was it just an automatic? No, that's guess? My, that's, like, that's right? my kicker. That's my kicker right there. Like, it seemed like I honestly felt like I was the best player after this year or two. So I was like, mm -hmm. well, damn, I, I expected Benfica to call me or something like that, but nobody called me. And, um, when my agent brought up sporting, I didn't even know sporting really was coming back. I remember it's so funny because my first year we're driving past, uh, we're driving past Avalade and uh, uh, one of my teammates from Olivier and says like, you see Trevante, one day you're going to play there when sporting is getting built. And I'm like, okay, wow. I don't even know what's going on. I don't really care. And then yeah. one day there was the the movie Black Panther came out and um, I got a video of it. And me and my teammates went to the, watch it. And one of my teammates was a sporting fan. So I just took his hat from his room because we were roommates and it was a sporting hat and I'm wearing a sporting hat before this even happened. And I had no That's clue crazy. about basketball or anything like that coming back. So when my agent brought it to me, it just, I already knew that it was the perfect thing. The, 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 one of the best coaches coming back. And yeah. it just seemed like I knew that I was really going to wait for Olivier um to, to, to sign back there because everybody was leaving and I was looking for my time to kind of shine. And, uh, it didn't really happen the way I wanted it to kind of took too long. And then when the sporting offer came, I just knew that that was the perfect situation. My agents, you know, guided me through that. And they were just like, yo, this is, this is where you want to be. This is, this is really, you know, this is Lisbon right here. And I was like, Oh yeah, count me in. I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. Let's do it. So it was kind of, it was an easy decision at the end of it. Hmm. For sure. It's funny. Cause you have this, this great journey coming to Portugal and really becoming really a fan favorite for both the leave events. And then, for sporting and then it translates to suddenly you're you've learned the language and now you're playing for the national team how did that come about like getting an offer yeah. to play for the national team like what what was that process like if you could take us into it i really not when i look at it now i feel like it was honestly all about the process of like I, the time that i spent in portugal after so many years there uh, i was eligible to be you know recruited for that but also it was the fact that uh just being a fan favorite being somebody of the people and um just really loving portugal like it's like like i plan to live in portugal when you know when i'm old like that's like my goal like get a get a place in Cascais or something or <laughs> or, or uh costa Caparica around there yeah. and like have a beach bar type of a deal like 
So like just falling in love with the country, I think the people recognize that. And that was something that's like dear to me. And I think is dear to the true fans and true people of the country. And I just, I know that like, I think they seen that I was willing to go do whatever it takes. Like when I'm out there playing with the national team, I really feel it. I haven't learned the national anthem yet. I'm getting there, you know, <laughs> yeah. but it's something that it's something that's real dear to me, man. And like playing around all those guys and seeing all the players that are on the team. It's like I some of the guys on the team, they grew up kind of watching me play my first two years mm -hmm. in Olivia. You know what I mean? They were 13, 14 watching me play. And it's just like it's just a beautiful story when I look at it. And I, I wouldn't want it any other way. Do you happen to uh, – sorry, Sam, take it right after. Do you happen to have any sort of contact with uh, with um, uh, Keita at all? Oh, Just signed with Boston? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of my guys. Uh, we chat on uh, Instagram and, and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, man, just uh, – he actually hang out, hung out with me on my birthday this past year. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's real dope to see that type. And I remember him from my first year when he was on the Benfica B team mm -hmm. and he wasn't getting any playing time at Benfica. And it's just crazy to see like his transition and what, what he's become. And it's like, man, it's super special. And then even to play with him, the times that I had to uh, with the national team was just special. You see the difference. You can tell that he's like, you know, really like he's an NBA player for sure. So, yeah, and it shows. And um, yeah, man, just being around that kind of guys, man, it's it's super special, man. The guy, the guy works hard. And even though he was in, in the NBA bubble and all that stuff and on the team with the Kings, he was never like act. He never acted like he was somebody bigger than anybody. He's just like a humble guy, funny, jokes around with the guys, and he's just like he's a real good time, man. I love that guy. Awesome. Uh, your time in Portugal, obviously, you played quite a few uh, teams, and of course, you played some European teams as well. When we talk about maybe Benfica or Porto, were those your toughest opponents and maybe your favorite teams to play against, or do you have sort of a and another team that was like when you like circle them on the calendar okay this is it this is the day that that i'm gonna go off well i i you know what i think the hype around the culture uh, in basketball and in football i think it trickles down to, to to you know to the basketball of course so like those rivalry games when you see benfica you see porto you're like okay these are guys that i you know you know when they're coming up and those games are really special because one thing I do like is I usually pick gyms. I like, you know, there's certain gyms that I like to just, you know, destroy. There might be some fans that I know I can see the faces. I remember them being there. So there's some hecklers out there that I really like. But there's a couple places in Portugal that I really, really like don't want the other team to win. And I think uh, Porto for sure is one of those ones. Uh, so I, the Porto will be my top. Um, also, a uh, sneaker is like uh, Povoa. I, I mm. I don't want them to when I'm playing there. I don't want those guys to win because they take it to some close games. The fans are, you know, very supportive of their team. And it's like a small town. They love their club. And but anywhere when I was playing in Portugal, like I didn't want nobody to win. So if it wasn't us, if it wasn't sporting, I, I didn't want you to win. So even going back to Oliveta was was one of those things too. So um, yeah, that's how I felt about it. I was I didn't really care where we played at. I just didn't, I knew what we had to do. I knew the job. I knew what was important. And Fika's cool too, you know, playing yeah. there. They're not, they're not so rowdy. They get rowdy when they're winning, but they're not, they're not as like uh, rowdy as the other fans. Yeah, typical big sure. fans to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. They are, no, over Overends, Overends is a, um, a Overends is a very, very nice place to play. They got a nice little section of young guys that yeah. just like love Ovar, and they just oh, they're they're playing the drums and they're going crazy. So any place where the the fans are are doing the most. And having their, they seem like they're having a good time, and they really feel like their team's gonna win. I that's the that's the team that I don't like that day. Okay. Yeah, and just just quickly, when you had to play against Oliver Ernst again, were there any sort of mixed emotions for you? Was it sad going back, or was it like, okay, I'm gonna prove a point? You said that they didn't really work out on the terms of going back there. So was it like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove something, or was it was it like maybe a sort of sad emotion for you? I can remember my first two years at Sporting. And uh, the one year was the COVID year, but I remember playing against Holy Veterans and I hated them. I did not mm -hmm. want them to win a thing because the coach stayed, some other players stayed. I just wanted them to feel it every single time. I had a lot of anger built up about that situation. So I wanted them to feel it every time. But when I let that go, it kind of showed like, you know, they still had love for me. They appreciated everything that happened. But uh, at that point, those first two years, I was, I was over it. Like I did not want those guys to win anything. Bro, I was watching. I was watching back your highlights too, and I I specifically remember, um, like you hit 
close, damn near close to half court, like a three yeah, point that you were that just thought. like, had no business shooting. Let's be real, but you just drain yeah, that yeah, and yeah. just walk back like it was nothing. So like I could feel. Yeah, yeah. I wanted every time I wanted like it was crazy because I, I when I'm playing, man, I got a lot of things, especially in Portugal. I had a lot of things going on in my head. Like I wanted those guys to feel it. It was like mm. I'm battling. It wasn't just like because every year if you're winning, it's it's kind of tough because how do you judge me now if if I'm winning everything? You know, if games are when you know games are coming easy, things are coming. This it looks like it's easy, but it's like. Okay, so now I have to do things that like you got to bring some wow factor, and I felt like that was like something like if I didn't even feel like good in myself of getting a basic layup or taking a basic shot, it didn't feel as good, you know. So I, I always wanted to put the wow factor on a lot of different things when I was playing out there. That's fair. Yeah. I just wanted to follow up. What was it like playing during COVID? Like no fans at all, because you figure like most athletes, you kind of sometimes feed off a hot crowd. Suddenly yeah. you go to playing, there's nobody. It's just you guys, it's just the players and the coaches and the broadcasters. That's it. Like, what was that? It like was a experience? interesting time, I tell you that. And if, I mean, yeah. I call it this like that year we won the championship, so I'm down with that. Like, I loved it. But I it kind of showed where it kind of showed like the real which players could start their engines right away. You didn't need no crowd, you didn't need nobody out there to to really get going. And um I didn't really realize it that whole year that what was going on until the fans came back. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is different now having the yeah. fans there. But when we played European competition, it was real weird. Playing European competition was weird that year. We're traveling. We're doing a lot of COVID tests. We're, they're jamming a, a little Q-tips up our noses and everything. Yeah. And then you're going to play. But coming back to Portugal, in that I can remember in that finals, it was like it was kind of lonely because – it was like you're going home after the game. You're not seeing anybody, so you're going to play basketball, coming home, and it's just like okay, it's like silence almost. So that year was interesting, man. But I think it was uh, it, it taught me a lot about just loving the game of basketball, and like it doesn't mean if there's if there's no fans, I don't care who's there, we're coming to play. And it, it was a uh, it was a nice nice like learning experience to know that you can start your engine whenever you got to. Cool. Yeah. Um. On on that, I mean on that COVID season that we won uh, crazy game against Porto in the final, especially that last series. Um, talk us through that. Yeah. I guess if you don't mind, talk us through that like occurrence. I know that Porto ended up going off at towards the end um, in terms of like, you know, their shenanigans and shit like that. But <laughs> I, mean, I think uh, it just, yeah, it shows the emotions, man. The game is so that that series was so crazy, man. It was really like you, you're down. It looks like it's about to be over. And that team was really, really good. And they put a lot of work into yeah. the, their craft and what they were doing that year. So it's like, yeah. I understand it. I really understood why, you know, the reactions that they had after the games and stuff like that. Because those guys, man, it's, that's an emotional way to lose. And nobody wants to lose like that. There's no fans to cuss you out. It's like, who else is going to stand up for the, you know, I mean, their team or what's going on. So in, in their defense, that's how it looked. But for me, it was like, man, that series was wild, man. I remember yeah. thinking, like, I'm not getting no haircuts, not anything going on, like, just, just unsure what's about to happen. It's like, you know, going back, looking at how you played, and just like, oh man, this is tough. Are we gonna be able to make it out of this? And and you know, big shots being hit and guys coming to, to step up and perform, and and you, you play things back. It's like. It, the, the ending of the game is so funny because it's an emotional that those emotions like the game is about controlling your emotions to a certain level and it's like the guy thinks that he didn't get fouled you know what i mean it's like so many yeah. things that play into it to where this is the situation now and now you're losing like this so it's important to kind of play always to the whistle but still have that emotional control at the end of the game and not make you know fouls that are going to cost you a championship so it's it's it was it was interesting, man. I'm just happy we were on the the, the winning side of it. Facts. <laughs> yeah, understandable. Uh, sad, oh, yeah. sad, sad Sam's question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we're talking about your your past, obviously. We talk about the present and the future. What goals have you set for yourself uh, in this this coming season, and then the this, this season's coming up as well? Well, right now, man, coming to Spain. Uh, Aside from all the hype that the ACB gets, which it's the hype, the hype is true and the hype is the hype is real. You know, yeah. you'll run into it's competitive all the way down and uh, from the top to the bottom. Um, you obviously is playing against the Barcelonas, the Real Madrids, the Valencias, 
uh, the Basconians, all these Euroleague teams and other teams at the Euro Cup. And I really didn't have too much knowledge prior to maybe two years ago about Euro Leagues and Euro Cups. I was just living my life playing in Portugal. But understanding that the, the, the level and what un, looking at the differences between why this is the Euro League and why, why why these teams are there and what you know the different quality of players and you just realize that every day you have to be on your game. And my first month and a half out here, I was experiencing that with my teammates, just like, damn, they're moving faster than I thought. You know what I mean? Am I, I'm questioning like whether am I fast or what's going on? And um, it just took like an adjustment period to kind of understand, okay, this is what's really going on. They're they're playing. Like there's certain moves that guys do that are along the lines of the rules of the game that I wasn't necessarily exposed to. So looking at the top from top to bottom, man, playing against these big teams and these nice arenas and going to these other smaller teams and uh, realizing that they're still super competitive. And, and they're like, you know, they're playing in FIBA Euro Cup and they're playing in Champions League and they're playing in Euro Cup, but they're not in the Euro League. So it's like. There's so many different levels to this. And uh, for me right now, it's uh, take care of my body, number one. Um, make sure that I'm at the tip top, my, my best. Uh, get the extra workouts in. Just trying to get into a routine of being like a true professional in that, in that aspect of just taking care of my body, eating the right things, working out, uh, getting enough sleep type of a deal. But uh, the goals that I'm setting right now are just – maintain what I have done already, be a winner, um, go out there and give it all, try to show, because not now it's like I'm not asked to be the best scorer or the best uh, the best shot maker or anything like that. Like my job hasn't like went down, but it's I'm not asked to do too much. There's really good guys and really good players that are like, not saying anybody else that I played with wasn't really good, but it's just different what you're asked for. This like nobody on my team plays over 22 minutes really. Unless it's a crazy, you know what I mean? A game where they're going hot, 25 minutes, they might get 30 minutes if it's a crazy day, but nobody on my team is playing over 25, you know what I mean? On any given night type of a deal. So it's all about um, understanding where you're at, understanding like the like the, 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 the moment that I'm in. And it's like, for me, it's like, just be my best, do the things that I'm really good at and try to, I'm not asked to do a lot, but I still am able to do a lot more. Than I was. I can focus on defense a lot more. And that's been one of my staples since I got here. Uh, hitting down a shot without having to take a dribble. Everything here became shorter or more efficient, is the better word. Mm -hmm. Like everything is more efficient. Your movements have to be more efficient. You don't have that much time to just sit there and dribble, 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 and do something and then put up a second shot. Like, it's not like that. There's somebody that can replace you. So feeling that, 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 that level of like you can be replaced kind of puts another, you know, uh, more a little bit uh, positive pressure on your back to where you want to do, you want to be more, do more, and seeing younger guys play on the team that are actually capable of doing great things and just being around that atmosphere is really, it's really good. So that's kind of where I'm at. My goals right now are just to be, be my best, and um, kind of see like I like I've always done, see where it goes from here. Still climb the ladder, try to get to the highest leagues possible, get to the Euro leagues, and you know, see what happens, man. Give myself a shot. That's my biggest thing right now. Just give myself a shot. Fair okay. enough. Uh, oh, this is me. I got to pay attention better. Um, no, no, I want to good. know. That's all good. Don't say that. Uh, I want <laughs> to know. Uh, do you still follow the NBA at all? Like, do you have the time? Even like, if so, like, what kind of teams are you following? What was your team growing up? Even that kind of stuff. I think I was always like a player guy. I never really okay. cared for the teams. Being from Alaska, it was like if it was an Alaskan team, I would love it. Yeah. Uh, my first NBA game that I ever seen was uh, the Supersonics versus the Wizards, I think, at the time. Right. And um, that was one of my first games. So I was always like growing up, I'm telling I tell guys this all the time. Like, I was never really a basketball head. Like I never really just was like stuck on the game. I never was really like following too much stuff. And even later in my career, like I'm just now starting to kind of watch other people other than myself. I watch my highlights and then see what I do. You know what I mean? time from time go watch a game but i like uh, i wasn't really a, a team guy but now since my boy Nemish is playing for boston i'm a super boston oh, yeah. fan. i'm a celtics mm -hmm. guy i'm also a hornets guy and i'm a timberwolves guy because uh two of my two yeah. guys that play from alaska are playing there so i'm wherever my friends are at pretty much i'm a bandwagon guy. and i also love the greats you know i love lebron james kevin durant but 
and the Lucas and stuff like that. So it's great to see. And I like the European players that played in us, you know, guys that I can relate to. You've played overseas and you kind of know. I really love the European players. So I like their style of play. I like their aggressiveness. And um, guys that I've played against, if I see you in the league, I like you because it makes me feel a little bit better, you know. So Sasha Vezenkoff in, uh, yeah. in uh, Sacramento, I like him. Nurkic playing for Phoenix, I like him. Um, anybody that I kind of played around or been around, I, I'm a big fan of yours. Nice, nice. Uh, just to relate it sort of back to the NBA and and in Spain, because especially in that ba- in that Barca team, you're coming up against guys that I mean, I, I mean names that we recognize like Jabari Parker. Um, uh, who else was there? There's um, Nikola Mirotic is there, right? Yeah, yeah. Willie, uh, Her- 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 Gomez, Gomez as well. Um, Gomez. How much is it? A, is, is it a, a trip? Like four. they, yeah. yeah, is it a trip at all? I mean, are you used to it by now? Like. Or do you still have to be like, oh man, I'm playing these these dudes like they were in the show? Yeah, I have. I I talk to myself all the time. I'm still like a kid with this stuff, man. I'm like, oh my god, I have. I'm playing with. I'm playing against these guys. And when I talk to my family and stuff, I'm like, you know who this guy is? You know what I mean? So I'm name dropping for sure. It's always been that way for me too, though, Um, because I was a Division two guy. I didn't play. I didn't get a scholarship to go to these places. So I remember first year in Olivetta is playing against a Will Sheehy, and he played with Victor Oladipo. So when I see these guys playing in these levels, it just kind of makes me think about my career, where I was, where I could have been possibly if I would have did the right things a little bit earlier. So it's all a learning experience for me, but it's also an appreciation factor. Like, okay, bro, you you do deserve to be out here. Like the things you've done are important and you you can play basketball. And I just think about the times that I've played. And it was funny, I, we were playing against Valencia recently and one of my pregame thoughts was about um, – I was thinking to myself in warmups, I was like, you know what, man, it wouldn't matter where we like if we were at outside on a park or if we were at 24 hour fitness in California and I was having a hot day and it didn't matter which player was in there. It could have been any NBA player. If I'm having a hot day and I'm having a really good day, like it's a problem for anybody. So that was like I was like, okay, yeah, if they were if they seen me on a good day and it didn't matter where, you know, I would probably make every shot because there's been days where I've had. You know, no film, no cameras. It's like a, a Monday night at 8 p.m. In, in Oakland, California, and I'm having that. They probably think I'm an NBA player there. So I've been able to, um, you know, it's those highs and those lows of your game. And you know where you've performed and and how it doesn't matter which player it is. Really, um, that's kind of the mindset that I carry. It's just like I don't care where you are. You're going to have to show me that I suck. That's what I want to know. Just prove to me that I suck and I'll believe you. And then usually when I go in there with that mindset, kind of being a fan, I usually get proved the other way. Like, oh, dude, you can compete. And then usually like they like it's 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 funny because I do this to myself. I kind of put myself down and then they kind of pick me back up throughout the game. They tell me, you know, we're chatting during the games or giving me conversation after the game. It's usually, you know, you kind of know if they give you like the little fake handshake or they give you a nice little hug or something like that and tell you that you're doing good and stuff like that. So that little appreciation goes a long way. And when I see that type of stuff, I know that, like, okay, do you belong here, man? You can play. And it's about having that confidence and, and kind of that swagger, knowing that, like, dude, I can compete with anybody. I done played with these. So I take it as, like, a, a notch on my belt every time I play against a player that's been at high levels. A lot of these guys are making crazy amounts of money. So it's like, oh, okay. It's, it's just more like, okay, they just haven't – I just haven't been seen enough until, you know, that when once I'm seen enough, then I can be in that 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 same spectrum. So – that's where I'm at with it. It's like I said, there's levels yeah. to this game, right? <laughs> oh, there's levels, man. There's levels. But you see it. You it, some, some of the guys I wasn't too impressed about. So when I see that, I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm not too impressed about you. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I just had a, a quick one before passing it to Danny. Um, with the like the sporting football team and all the other modalities and stuff, was there any sort of crossover for you? Did you have like friendships along like with the other other sporting teams or was it merely just a basketball sort of space for you for me it was um it was all the modalities everybody in the modalities we were kind of cool with uh futsal team big fans yeah we used to see each other in passing all the time share locker rooms and stuff futsal team was dope um volleyball team had some great guys handball team we kind of we kind of brushed past a little bit Women's volleyball team was very nice to us. Um, yeah, so everybody in that modalities area, we were pretty cool with, and it was a real good time with them. 
just seeing each other in the past and motivating each other. Oh, the hockey team. Can't forget those guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those guys were really dope. Where our lockers were right next to each other. So it was a lot of screaming and shouting going on. Those guys were pretty cool. And when you get to know everybody in there and how, like, the the training staff and, and the, the, the guys that are picking up the clothes and stuff like that, the managers, you get a different appreciation for – what's really going on everybody seems like they're you know on the same accord and that you know you feel the fan love and you feel how everybody's like you know we're all on the same team here so you're rooting for everybody to do their best and you see the work that these guys put in and then you see them go out there and have success and it's just like okay this is dope this is great we're part of this like union and everybody's we're just working at different areas right now so it's real dope to be a part of that nice. fair enough thanks I- before I ask, the, I mean, I'm going a little off script. There's just a few things I wanted to just quickly brush upon. So, Rich, if you have another question. No, you go. You take it away. I just wanted to also ask, like, in relation to, like, your time in Portugal and now in Spain, like, you know, there's similar languages, kind of similar cultures. Like, has, has your time in Portugal helped you at least uh, kind of in Spain? Or has this been, like, a, a Oh, totally it's given me everything. Yeah. Portugal, I think about that my first – when I'm able to – when I'm able to reflect, I'm out, it's, it happens a lot. I'm moving somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I could be reading something or I could be listening to the coach speaking Spanish. And I'm able to, like, put the context clues together and understand something. It's like a pat on the back to Portugal every time I do it. Every time I hear something, hear my coach talking or my, it could be the teammates talking and I understand something and the, the language just kind of blend in. I'm like, oh, man, I learned that in Portugal. Shout outs to Portugal. It's always like it's a quick thing that happens and it better happens a lot. So even driving and similar words or anything like that, it's just like, oh, yeah, shout outs to Portugal. Love you every time, every single time. Because the coaches, sometimes the coaches go off and they're like, they're talking in English and then they'll go have a little Spanish break. But I, I can understand not everything, but I'm feeling the way what they're saying and I understand. So it's like, oh, OK, we're all on the same page here. You guys are just a little, you know, you guys, the languages are just they're, they're very close. So it's like, I, I really it, it happens a lot. Nice. Fair enough. And then uh, just also quickly on Portugal, um, you were sort of the face of like basketball in Portugal for, for most of your time there, especially I'd say, especially at Sporting. Maybe I'm a little biased because I was following the team a lot closer than the other guys. But I think uh, out of like even the Benfica and the Porto boys, like you, you were definitely like the shining star there uh, of guys playing in the league. You know, Keita, you know, he went on to do his own thing, but uh, of course, like playing in basketball, you were the face of that. How much have you seen like the league even it, like improve or change? Even because I, I think I heard you once say like you sort of brought up uh, Shakir to Spartan to sort of bring him on. Like has he even like maybe the recruitment process changed out there or how have you seen like that whole evolution there? Um, It's been dope, man. Just come thinking about my first year. Thinking about uh, the guys, the the amount of players that were out there, and just like the big names that are coming, and just um, I definitely feel like a, you know part of the, take a lot of responsibility for that, you know, because nobody likes to lose all the time. So when you're winning all the time, it's like guys are gonna have to go do what they have to do. So right. just the just making it something that's like a like a, a real good culture for basketball. That was always my goal to a certain extent. I wasn't thinking about it necessarily, but throughout my play, throughout the I think the time I spent there and what I do when it comes to supporting other players or supporting some of the younger people on the national teams and stuff like that, it's all about just kind of, I tell that to a lot of kids when they're trying to go overseas, no matter where it's at, you have to embrace the culture. And it just so happens that I like, I really like the Portuguese culture. So it's like, it's easier for me. It's like very natural to be like, okay, I really love this. This is something that like, this is dear to me. So seeing how the level of basketball has improved and, and the, the names that we get now coming in and the amount of guys that are just there. I even got a guy from Alaska playing at Overance right now. And another guy that's playing that is from Alaska is playing in like the second division. So being, and then I knew a guy from college, he's playing in the second division. So being connected to all these players around the country, like my name, when you come, when you think about Portugal is like, if you're going to Portugal, one of the first names you're going to hear about is mine. So having that stamp is really like, is really dope. I get a lot of messages from people just, you know, got to this team, you know, heard about your name, find you on Instagram saying, what's up? You know, can you help me out here? What do you think about this? So just being connected to all those guys is something special to me. It makes me feel, you know, real good about the work that I put in there. And, you know, it just didn't just get passed around and, you know, I'm still remembered there. So it's real special, man. And I, I'm, 
thankful for the whole journey, the whole process about it, no matter how it went, the ups and the downs, I think, you know, some of the losses that I took while I was there, it's just like, okay, this, you know, there was a big reason that, was, you know, there's a big thing. And it, and it goes to that passport thing as well. And being part of the national team, it makes me feel, you know, like I really belong. Cause there's some people that don't necessarily like, don't think that it's ideal for me to play on the national team, seeing that I'm not a Portuguese born player. And, um, you know, there's, I've, it's been addressed to me before. Like, you know, some people don't feel they would rather lose with, or, you know, I, I, it's been told verbatim, like, yo, I'd rather lose with my Portuguese guys than I have, you know, an American playing just to help the team and stuff like that. And it, you know, that kind of hurts, but in the end, on the, on the backside of it, I totally understand it. But for me, it's like, I've kind of earned this right to be this. And it's not like I'm just one of these guys that you can just say that was just here and there, you know what I mean? Just left or anything like that. Like I really stamped my name there and I really put in work and, you know, helped a lot of people when it comes to this basketball stuff in the country. So I take credit for it and I, I, I truly enjoy it and I love it. Thanks. For sure. Uh, and so I'll, I'll finish it off finally. You're, you're out, uh, wrap it up, big guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And, and just, it's perfectly on that point too. Um, you know, like, Basically, whether it's on the court in, in Portugal specifically and, and elsewhere as well, um, or even off the court, like it's been proven, you're 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 a, you're a winner. There, there's no two ways about it. You know, you're winning in life. You're winning on the court. Um, what do you put that down to? Whether it's on or off the court, like your your ability to just go into a situation and and make the most out of it, and for the most part, walk away a winner. I think that just starts with my upbringing, man. I've always been a guy that like, I didn't have too much. Like my, you know, I grew up with a good family and good things like that, but there was certain moments in my life where I was like, damn, you know, it could be my pride and my ego where I'm not gonna ask for too much either. So if it's not kind of like, if somebody's not thinking about me and kind of giving me something, I always had that mindset like, yo, I gotta go get it. I gotta take it. Cause I grew up with guys getting offers from other club or other uh, division one colleges. I grew up around, you know, some good basketball players where I was never the one. And even when I went to college, I didn't until my senior year in college, I wasn't the one. So just having that mindset, like, yo, being in different, I've been in a lot of difficult situations. One of my thoughts is always, you know, how many gyms that I've played in, like just gyms, period, how many rims that I've shot the ball on. And that's something that I, you know, hold special to myself. I played in a lot of different states. I played outside in Miami with when I only had flip flops, when I, but I didn't have flip flops. The flip flops were messing up. So I went barefoot and guys were looking at me crazy. And like I'm a professional athlete at this time, but I'm still like it's just the amount of like loving the game and playing it and like, you know, playing it when you get off work or something like that or playing it when you don't have I have like, there's videos of me playing with running shoes on. Like I was never a guy that was like, oh, I have to have this to go play. Like when it's time to compete, I was always been ready to compete. And that kind of helps me propel myself through a lot of difficult situations. It's like, dog, I had I played I slept in a gym a few times. You know what I mean? just because I didn't necessarily have a, the, the bus was too late. I couldn't go home or there's just been difficult situations that went on that. I think when I, when I see other players and throughout my whole entire career, I've always fueled myself off, like kind of watching other players and the things that they wouldn't do. And I was always considering myself the guy that would do that. Like, cause I didn't have no fear. I wasn't worried about embarrassment. I wasn't worried about those little things. Cause I've already been in places where I was embarrassed and I've been in there. So kind of learning from my mistakes and, learning from just the, the lack of confidence that I've had over the years. And even this conversation right now is I'm getting motivated about going to practice tomorrow because I'm like, dog, I've played in these difficult situations. I've been in that. So far from just the the glamour or, or anything, the fame that kind of came through with playing now and like people just seeing me now, it's like I've always been this type of player where I was ready to get it out the mud. I was ready to do whatever it took. I was always ready to do the dirty job. I like to call myself the dishwasher. You know what I mean? Like I'm down to do all that type of stuff. And even that's what, that's what's beautiful about being in Spain now. And not, they asked me in an interview the other day, it's like, uh, so you were the, you were the man in Portugal. You're like one of the best players, but you come to the ACB. You're not really like that. Like, how does that make you feel? And I'm just kind of like, well, first of all, I've only been here for two months, but yeah. honestly, like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not scared of the challenge or anything like that. You know what I mean? So I like being in the position where I can show my defensive side. I can show me, going to go get a block on a big man or something like that, just really being this hard nosed kind of guy. And I think that's, what's going to pave the way for me to have more success in my, my, my future career is just, I'm not afraid of the moment. I've been in those moments. A lot of guys haven't, I've been playing against the portals, the Benficas 
And it doesn't matter which level they're at, but those games are still tough no matter where you are. You know what I mean? Those moments are still big. Those cup moments where, you know, the games are on the line and you got to be in that situation. A lot of guys don't have that experience. They don't have that those minutes logged. So when I look at my career, everything that I've been through just in my life, my whole, you know, coming from just being the underdog and making this stuff happen and kind of sticking with it. And even going, I went to college. I went to college. One of my years in college, I was on a team with 11 Division One players. And there was only two guys that went Division Two out of that team. And me and him are the only guys still playing right now. All those other Division One wow. guys don't play anymore. Wow. They only played, you know, a couple years overseas. And they never, you know, they had good careers in college, but they didn't. You know, there was three guys playing, actually. I take that back. But those guys didn't play long. You know what I mean? And it was like, that fuels me. Love those guys to death, but that still is the, that's the stuff that fills me. I, when I went to my my division, my first division two, I wasn't the best player. I had a role coming off the bench, and now off that team, there's only two guys playing. So it's like, you know, you kind of have to pass this level of like, and I remember the doubts that I had in my career. Like, I wasn't just this guy that was like blazing confidence all the time. I had confidence. I wasn't scared. Like, I was like, what's the worst that could happen? But I wasn't always confident in like, the my skill play maybe it's my 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 left hand and you know what i mean so and I, I would see these other guys and the things that they, that's why it's so important to stay in your lane and kind of focus on you because i would see these other these other players and these other guys and i'm like damn i don't jump that high like mm-hmm. damn he's big and he can shoot the ball like okay this is crazy and uh yeah man that's what kind of fuels me right now man i'm just like yo even on this team when i first got here it's like yo these guys are good you know, players are jumping out the gym. There's things that I can't do. The coach was kind of on me for the first couple of months. Like, this is in Portugal. You're not expected to be doing this type of stuff. You need to be, you know, do play your role kind of a deal. And it's like, I just need to find my ways. That's what I'm like. My biggest thing is like kind of find what I'm looking for, find how I can move. And that's been the whole the whole journey right now for me. It's like, dog, I'm not scared of too much. I'll get up. And there was times in, in college where I were, or high school or you know, the kids that didn't want to go do the the, the talent show. And now it's like, I'm not, a, I, I was probably nervous to do it. I probably had talent, but was nervous to do it. And now I like, I shake that type of stuff off. I'm not really, I could be nervous in the moment, but I'm still willing to go out there and do it because I'm not really scared of too much. So that's how I look at, look at a lot of things in life when I'm, as I'm moving forward. Yeah, love, love that. As a nice. guy who used to be a dishwasher, I love that dishwasher analogy. By the dishwasher, way. Man. I appreciate. I'm down to now. I'm down to get dirty. Like you, you know do, what I mean? You gotta do what you gotta do for the team. You gotta do what you gotta do. I watched some. I watched some dishes before too, so I know. <laughs> and, you know, I had to do some odd jobs to really get here. So it's like, man, what am I really? You know, because there's people watching. People, you know, and this is a thing. Players freeze up when there's too many fans watching. I've been in moments like that. So when I look at it, it's like. The biggest moments that I thought were going to define my career and shape everything kind of didn't. So it was like, oh, there is no reason to have fear. And you think, you know, I've seen players, I've seen them finish their careers. You know what I mean? And it's like, okay, well, you're going to have to find a new life after this. And, you know, they're not getting judged or stuff about how they play basketball now. They're older. So it's like in the moment, you have to really kind of give everything you got because you don't really have that much time. It's not, we, we're not going to get, not everybody's going to be LeBron James playing to yeah. 40. So it's like, you got to know it's time to give it. And you can't have the, the worst thing to have is some embarrassment about some stuff. And I've been embarrassed. And, you know, I, I even let some of my teammates dunk on me now, just like mm. uh, after practice or something like that. Or even I, remember I used to do this when I was in it's like a defense mechanism. I used to do this when I was in high school. Let some of my friends dunk on me just to get over the fact of like, you know, you're getting dunked, getting dunked on. on. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's like forget it. You know what I mean? It's, it's already happened. So some guys that could deflate nice. their whole game right there. They'll they get dunked on. They don't want to play defense now. They're like a little shy, or scary. And when I get in that mode, when I just can block everything out, I'm not worried about any of that type of stuff. I'm ready to just go. You know, win, play, do the things that I know how to do. And uh, yeah, that's the biggest thing for me. Nice, yeah, sweet, nice. Well, I mean, that's, I think that's a great place to end it off. Obviously, we wish you luck in your your future. We're still following you closely. And obviously, we have great memories of, of you at Sporting. So, again, thank you so much for, for coming. And we, we follow uh, Tremante down there as well with the the in the bottom left. Um, and, again, thank you for your time. We know you're a busy man. You know, you've got stuff to do. So, we appreciate you. And just thank you so much for your time. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for, uh, yeah, thanks for this opportunity to finally get into down pat. And uh, definitely will, yeah, man. We can come back in the springtime, you know what I mean? I might need, you might need a fourth anchor. I'll be up in here, you know, I like this. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love that.
<laughs> Let me know when you need me to come back. I'll be back for sure. Don't be don't be saying something you can't keep up on, man. Don't yeah, be promising yeah. us things you can't do, bro. Hey, man, hey, we're gonna hold you to stuff. I'll come I'll come through each month, man. We could talk NBA. We can talk everything. Oh, yeah. Love that. I just gotta I gotta watch it. You know, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch something. Very nice. Well, for both of us, I'm in the UK and obviously there's a time difference watching NBA at like two in the morning, three in the morning. Is this I'm never gonna happen. I'll yeah, watch the highlights the day yeah. after. Yeah, yeah, we're me and Danny are like Eastern cool. Canada. We're in like Toronto and stuff. We yeah, we're, we're Raptor good. fans though, so trust me, it's it's hard this year too to Toronto watch basketball here here. sometimes. The hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are going through it. It's gonna be a tough one. I mean, but you guys got a championship. So you we got a ring. Doing, I can, can die. Yeah, that's gonna I, hold I, mean, I always say I was real. real. Yeah, I see. I see Gasol getting drunk in the streets on that parade, bro. I'm happy now. You know, I'm I'm fine after that. We got that moment. You know, it's crazy. And I played against his team that he owns out here. Like I actually seen him twice since I've been out here. Big guy. And oh, it was so dude. fun. Okay, the last thing I got to say. Damn. A moment where I'm thinking there was some kids that were like, we're, there's some kids that were waiting, and I'm thinking they might want to take a picture with me, but they just weren't saying anything. And then next thing you know, Marcus Gasol walks out this back room, and like, that's who the kids wanted to take that's a picture a with. Moment. And I'm just like, yo, I remember the days. I remember the days when kids knew who I was, and they're running to take pictures with me, but like, they wanted Marcus Gasol. <laughs> right, cool. Understand. And, and you're there with your phone, like, yo, Mark, can I get a picture too, real quick? <laughs> yeah, I tried, and I, you know what? I I wanted one so bad, but I was like, you know what? He came and watched one of our other games, and I, in my head, I was like, let me just play so well that Mark kind of remembers yeah. who I was. You know yeah, what I mean? Nice. So I was leave it, leave an impression, leave him thinking. Yeah, yeah, but I'm gonna see him again for sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get my picture for sure. Nice. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, love that. <laughs> nice man. Well, again, thank you so much yeah. for coming on. Uh, hope you enjoy the rest of your day as well. And have a, have a good season, man. We'll definitely reconnect and uh, do this again All sometime. Right. I appreciate you guys, man. Thanks, Sporting bro. Simple. Bye, guys. <laughs>